Well, Ralph, it's uh, right. it, it's it's a great pleasure to, to meet you, even in cyberspace. And um, well, well, it's thanks like very much, Bert and Russell. You Absolutely. So much like Bert. So, uh, uh, I mean, as I, as I was saying a little earlier on, I came across your yeah. work first of all through Hunter Thompson and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. But it's fascinating yeah. to look back at your early career. Because I oh, think you yeah. you you actually you've done some rather curious things before you began all this. I think you were at the De Havilland yes, aircraft I, factory for a I, while. I went. There, I I became a, a, a an apprentice. Yes. For and I after nine months I couldn't stand it, so I left, and yes. I couldn't stand factory life. Yeah. I knew it wasn't for me. Yeah. And after that, I had I had a a, a, a brother-in-law called Ron Howard Davis who who got me a job. He was a he was a careers officer, and he right. got me a job at uh, Woolworths as a, <laughs> as a stockroom boy, come you know, trainee, trainee manager, as they called them. You know, yeah, right. And it was uh, awful, uh, but I, <laughs> I managed to uh, see it through n- another nine or twelve months. I don't know how much, but uh, I had to sweep the floors every. It was it was Colwyn Bay. Ah. In, you know, in, in, Wales, in North yeah. Wales, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And, uh, Were you already interested in drawing? Was that something that already n- no, intrigued no, I, you? I hadn't thought about. It. I, I, I'd done uh, for my De Havilland aircraft uh, apprenticeship. I, I went to um, Wrexham Tech College for mm. for drawing technical drawing. Yes, and that's where the that's where the circles and square, you know, and parallel mm. lines came from. Really, that's mm. how that right. really came right. from. Right. And uh, I, where, where was I? And then I, so I had to go there once a week anyway to the tech college, you know. Yes. Yeah. But I, I just, I just couldn't stand the whole thing, you know. Yes. I, I just decided. That wasn't for me, and I knew that eventually I would have to do my military service, you know. Yes. And I, and I was in the RAF um, mm. as a radar operator, or as I say, uh, someone learning to, to watch television, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would have been a pioneer of watching television in those yeah. days, I think. Like this. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm fascinated by the connection between technical drawing and developing later on as an illustrator and cartoonist and many other things. Well, I, I was fascinated by Heath Robinson, who came in by a similar route, uh, and I, I see, read yeah. somewhere that you had uh, gone to this uh, the press art school correspond. You'd, you'd studied yeah, on the yes. press art school Percy, correspondence course, per, and Percy Heath B. Robinson Bradshaw. was involved with that. Yes, per- yes, Percy, yes, oh, yes, Percy B. Yes, Bradshaw, yes. Press Art School. It said, yes. you too can learn to draw and earn pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, working for a record company like Esquire, earning about two pounds is probably about as much as you could Yeah, Yes, I didn't making. get much for that, no, I think. <laughs> I think it was just the, the pleasure of do, being able to do them, you know, being mm. asked, asked to do them. Yeah, I mean, they're quite fun, really. You know, that's... I must, uh, yes, beautiful, that's actually. Yeah. I was going to, um, before we move on to the records, I just wanted to ask you one thing about about that technical drawing and and and, and creative drawing yes. development. That, uh, because two of my favourite drawings of yours from the Hunter Thompson days were the, the wonderful one of his, which is frequently reproduced, where he's kind of halfway between a crocodile and a bat, but the thing that is is so is sort of like oh, a technical drawing cigarette. is the cigarette holder, and yeah. there's another one from uh, from uh, the Kentucky Derby where there's a guy who is falling apart, his face is kind of slipping off almost, and yet what is yeah. absolutely precise are the binoculars round his neck. Oh, uh, right. I, 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 yeah. I just find that a fascinating combination. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm. it, but actually, it's the it's a Kentucky Derby. Derby, it, you're right. Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, in so. by the late fifties, you'd you had had some cartoons published. I think the first one was in a Manchester newspaper in about fifty six or so. Manchester Evening Chronicle, nineteen fifty eight. I oh, think it was. Right. Okay. 
Yes. And, uh, or may, maybe 55, but I, anyway, it was, and it was a picture of, of um, a, a lock keeper sitting there, you know, yes. after, after Giles, I was very fond of Giles. Yep. Uh, and it was him saying, NASA, who's he? <laughs> yes, of course. For for, yeah. for younger viewers, a reference to uh, NASA, the president of Egypt, who became yeah. quite a significant figure in British political life yes, by accident yeah. with the Suez Crisis and so forth. Yes. yes now, it, so after after that period, um, you would presumably have been looking for little bits of work here and there as an illustrator, and and came yes. into doing some record covers. For a squire, I wondered whether I know that's that's a, a very long way off, and perhaps too many details about his squire we maybe can't discuss. But the, I wondered what the connection that got you in there might have been. There was a designer called John Marshall. There was he anything to do with it? John Marshall. Now, I don't I don't remember what he looks like. I mean, it's a fairly familiar name, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I I worked for two people, Tony something. And, and they would, they'd set up a record company, and they wanted, yeah. You know, and yeah. I did these drawings for, for uh, these informal sure jazz is. and funky jazz and yeah. Gene Ammons all stars. And, could you uh, tell us? Sorry to interrupt you, but I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how you would have thought about those images, because what what. Carlo Kramer and Esquire did, it seems, is license these American uh, albums, and then the British at the British end, it would all have its own artwork, as a characteristically yes. Esquire well, artwork. I, and I love this. I love the idea of collage. Yes, I'd got to understand that, and and yeah. to do with rough drawing, and yes. then put it with a you know with a. With a fish and yeah. put a pair of yeah. legs on it, and and that was uh, well, it was a, it was tricky, you know. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed it for that reason. It's, um, it's, not, I don't mean sly, but just ah, oh, I quite like that works, you know. That's yeah. sort of my idea. Yeah. Yeah. Would you listen to the music to do that, or just go by the title? Or? No, I, no, I used to listen to it and see what yeah. it was about, you know. Yeah. And then this one, informal jazz, I mean, that obviously s speaks about what it is about, you know. Yes. Informal jazz, it's for relaxing too, you know. Yeah. So. Yes, yes. It's a much more arresting image than the original American one, which is just this rather sort of quiet woodland scene. Oh. And, um, uh, yeah. and you've done these these wonderful pictures yes. of, of, uh, of people in various places Positions Poses, upside yeah. down, sideways, and uh, in what appear to be deck chairs. And, it looks um, like it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. They did. They did invent. They invented the deck chair at that time. I think. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you always caught your finger in it. That's what I always remember from deck chairs. Oh, Every time catching, you folded yeah, them up. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, horrible. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, with absolutely. the funky jazz one that you've drawn, this beautiful spiky fish with with rather elegant. Trousers and and, yes. and loafers and then, on. Well, long shoes, right? Really. Long I, shoes. It, they were like cartoon shoes, aren't they? Yes. I they mean, are. people used clown to draw shoes. Cut, clown yes. shoes in a way. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's yes, examining a, a pot of jam. Yes, I don't know what that's there for. <laughs> you know, that, that's just. Is it jam or G? It, yes, it's jam. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it looks like Jill. I, 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 I see that. Mm. And then the Gil Evans one, I I don't remember that one. Right, right. At all. I think that's, a, that, that's like those uh, comedy and drama theatrical masks or something. Of, oh, it is a bit like that, isn't it? Yes. yes. And again, a much more dramatic and, and arresting image than the American one, which is yeah. just this rather, rather cool yes, photo, well, that's photograph. Yes, well, man... Yeah. Uh, out of focus, man. Yes, quite. <laughs> did you listen oh, to a lot of music? I mean, did you? Were you already? Yes, a, a I was music quite fan in keen days? on it because I was learning the guitar as well. I'd met mm -hmm. at the art college in East Ham Tech College. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd met um, uh, at, um, what's his name, Alan Hodgkin. 
yeah. Alan Hodgkin and his wife Glad Gladys. Yeah. And uh, I used to take lessons with him. And he played with Django Reinhardt, you know. Good look. He played, he was with the, in, when they came to England, mm. he was, he was um, a, a member that they picked up for, as part of the band, you know, him and, mm. what's his name, the, the violinist? Um, Stefan Grappelli. Well, Stefan Grappelli, yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, uh. That was quite interesting doing that. But we used to, he wanted to talk about art all the time. <laughs> and I wanted to play, trying to, <laughs> which is, I don't think it worked out too well. Anyway, no one. <laughs> of course, you did some covers for, for, um, for rock records and, and pop records and uh, for Frank Zappa, I think, and for the Who. Yeah, Frank Happy Zappa, Jack. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, there's another one, the big man. What was his name? Slash. Oh God! If I if I think of it, I'll think of it. You yeah. know, yeah. It's just yeah. some other one. But uh, it's it's not. I'm not sure what I am these days. Whether I'm a cartoon, aspiring cartoonist, or, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think so. And I've I've I kept doing drawings for. Um, uh, the New Statesman. And, mm. yes. Uh, yes. And you've done and illustrations. To, Sorry. I used, no, I used to work for Punch as well. Yes. And I used to go to their lunches they had, you know, on a, in Boobery Street. Yeah, right. Uh, right, yeah. And uh, I got to know Hewison was the, edit, the editor and uh, Mahood. Right, he was uh, Ken Mahood. He was a cartoonist and a, an art director. You know. Yes, yes. And well, did you want to? Of course, you, you, as we've said, you you started off with a cartoon, the one in the in the in the Manchester Evening Chronicle. Evening was Chronicle. Yeah. yeah. But uh, did you were you conscious of wanting to move away from cartoons to something that was more? Um, uh, uh, creative in a different way. Yes, or? I wanted. I wanted to be creative in a different way. That is, I wanted to make a comment about the world. Yes. I wanted to change the world. You know. Yes. And now, sixty years on, it's. I've changed it. It's. It's worse now than it was when I started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's your fault. <laughs> no. No. But, uh, well, anyway, actually. Mm, Since you mentioned that, there is a quote in your biography um, about how you were treated at school. I wondered whether this was something to do that had a, some some roots in your desire to change the world, because you said authority is the mask, it's of, mask violence. of violence. Yes. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah, and of course, undermining authority has been a, a big characteristic of your work all the way down the line, really. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 authority is the mask. Mask of Violence. Mm. Mm. Um, well, that no, and awards are the badges of mediocrity. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was the other. Excellent. <laughs> yes. Um, so I was uh, just moving on from from the, the the records, doing the records work. Although I know you did yeah. that, you've done that on and off ever since. But when yes. uh, when you you started working for, with Private Eye and stuff in 1961, yes. that's and right. Was that the point at which your and also you did a, a beautiful version of um, Alice in Wonderland, developing yes. those ten eel pictures in in, oh, yes. in different ways. Yeah. Um, so it, it seemed as if you were really opening out as an artist in that period and discovering many other yes, ways I, of looking at the world. I, I was so keen to do things like, like, for instance, you know, there's a thing on in Vienna at the moment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I went to Vienna to, to, to the Ninth District to find Freud's house. Ah. And I found his house and went, was invited in, you know, I, asked, I wrote and asked them, and uh, I said, would I, uh, I, uh, well, I can't remember his name now, gentleman that ran it. But anyway, he said, I expect you want to go down and see the consulting room, mm -hmm. which is down in the cellar. Mm -hmm. and there was one of those old square white sinks in the cellar, you know. Yes. And uh, I had a camera with me 
because I wanted to say, get really see how it looked when I lay on the floor and looked up. Ah, yeah. You know yeah. where, where, where? I said where exactly was the couch? You know, so mm -hmm. he told me, and then I lay down exactly where it had been. So it's slightly yeah. like it, you know. Did a lot of uh, did a lot of memories of your childhood suddenly surface in that moment? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Being a baby, you mean? <laughs> yes. I was thinking of the Blitz. <laughs> no, I think I must uh, be, yes. Yeah. When your mother was knitting while the uh, bombs oh, were Oh, yes, falling. while the bombs were falling. Terrible, yeah. Mm. yeah. That, that was really so bad. Um, I, I don't know, the whole, the whole of yeah. that. And now the way it's going, uh, the I mean, the problems in Vienna at the moment, it's sure. yes. pretty bad, yeah. you know. Yes, um, yes. I don't understand people wanting to shoot, shoot, shoot people. But yes. this seems to become quite a, a fashionable thing to do, yes. to, become a, yes. to become a killer, you know. Yes. The world and, has uh, got very, very fragmented and divided, hasn't it? I mean, there seemed oh, to be like a consensus okay. after the Second World War where but there yes. were people saw eye to eye a bit more, but that, yeah. that does seem to be in a bad way at the moment. Breaking up. Yeah, we are, really. Mm. Terrible. Mm. Mm. Oh, dear. Uh, I won't keep you an awful lot longer. No, no, I really, no, I really no do worry. appreciate uh, this, but uh, just to talk a little bit about Hunter Thompson in that period of your life, oh, because God, I think yeah. that, that must have been... An, an extraordinary experience. I mean, reading yeah, some well, of Thompson's descriptions of meeting you, uh, uh, yeah, you, you couldn't have been more of a contrast, could you, the two of you? Um, well, we were looking for each other for three uh, three hours, or three days, rather. Really? You know, we kept coming back to the place. Where the hell? Was it? You know, <laughs> not really connecting somehow. Mm. And they're going to the press room and asking, have you seen? Well, he's in the press room somehow. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh I suddenly heard this, excuse me, uh, hey, hello? And, and I looked at this six foot six bloke that yeah. had shaved his head and I, good God, he said, uh, are you uh, Hunter S. Thompson? No, I think I called him Hunter S. Johnson. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, you know, that's fine. It's Thompson. Yes. In Kentucky. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, well, I believe we're supposed to be doing something on the Kentucky Derby together. Or well, I called it Derby too, and he said, Derby. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he said, he said, my God, he said, they said you were weird. But not that weird. Because <laughs> I had a little goatee beard at the time. Right. And, and, and at that time in, in Kentucky, nobody wore beards, you know, of any kind. But yeah. now I think everybody wears a you know, beard. I, I don't, but a lot of people do. But yeah. um, he said, my God, he said, you look like a, like a matted haired geek with string warts. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I don't know what. It's you. That's what a matted haired geek is. <laughs> anyway, it's got to work. We go, we, hmm? It's not a very so, auspicious introduction, was it? It's a, no, not really. No. <laughs> but it was interesting because, because we were quite different. I was mm. the, innocent, the innocent from England, you know, mm. the innocent abroad. And, uh, he, um, we got on well, actually, but he said, maybe we should uh, uh, get a, get a bit, do you drink? I said, well, I have something. Well, how about a beer? Yeah, yeah, let's get a beer. Watch the race. You know, there were different races, mm. weren't just mm. the Kentucky Derby. Mm. And uh, we got one and sat and chatted a bit, and he got to know me a bit. I think I got to know him, and... Yeah. Uh, there was one, something very definitely different about each of us. You know, mm. we were um, like chalk and cheese, really, you know. Mm. Mm. And, um, but it worked out. It, of all the people I should meet in America, that's, that's the fellow, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. that really worked. Mm. 
So, do, do you, uh, I mean, it seemed to me that you tuned into his idea of journalism. Where I mean, that gonzo journalism thing where in a way oh, yeah. the, 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 the observer has become part of the story. Uh, which ah, is what, yes, which, but, but, yeah. but the thing about that is that uh, it was a, a man, man from, what was his name, Sadie? Uh, Cardozo? Cardozo. Car- Cardozo. Hmm. From, from um, over the Bay Bridge. Right. He lived right. At, uh, in the island on the other side. And he was the one, he worked, worked for the Boston Globe. Right. Bill Cardoza, his name was. And he was the one who said, my God, when he saw the first things we did, you know, mm. um, for this article, uh, uh, we, we well, the, 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 no, there were several reasons why it was weird. One was that we had to use the colours of um, uh, Don Goddard's wife, who worked as a as a uh, a makeup rep, oh. you know, right. in 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 America, hmm. and I'd lo- I'd left my colours in the taxi, <laughs> so. All those sort of little things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's when I use colours, you know, like lipsticks and that's things of wonderful. that kind. That's wonderful. But it's just that kind of little ideas that happen, yes. you know. Yes. And, and chan- the- they were complete, they were cock-ups really, but they were, yeah. they were useful ones, you know. Yeah. And uh, Steph- the, uh, the guy who's cur- curating this exhibition, Stefano Wagner, who's a big record collector in, in uh, Lugano, yeah. Uh, yeah. he loves this idea of, of creative art happening by accident. Yes, uh, it's, it's the best, you know, best way. He thinks that often happens in record covers because yeah. they're often done in it, a terrible hurry for, with very yes. little money and all that. Yes, it's why I like Marcel Duchamp so, so much. Yes. It's because everything he does is like, you know, a table is a is a chair, and a yes, uh, you know, anything it is wants to be. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, did you I, find I during like, that? I'm sorry, I, I was no, wondering if you found during those first experiences of working with Hunter Thompson that they quite quickly changed the way you wanted to draw, or did you already have that style before? No, before I, you started. I don't that job? look upon it as a style. It's just a drawing, and, yeah. and also. No, no pencil. I used to go straight in with the ink. Right. And uh, people say to me, don't you make a mistake? And I said, there's no such thing as a mistake. A mistake's an opportunity to do something else. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, just so, to do with some of your, some of your later work, I, you, you, you've uh, done quite a lot of work for drinks firms. Oh, for various odd, bin, kinds. odd bins, yes. odd bins, and then uh, I think for for uh, various uh, uh, ale companies in the states, some of which ended up quite yes. controversial uh, illustrations, I believe. Well, um, I, I went I went to various places all over England, yes. you know, Scotland and everywhere yeah. for odd bins. Right, and mm. odd bins is gone now. It is a shame. It's a mm. was a really good firm, you know, good. Uh, yes. Uh, if it hadn't been for Hunter Thompson, you may well not have pursued this part of your career because maybe he was the one who enthused you with the uh, with the whole subject of of uh, alcohol. Uh, yes, but yes, I didn't do drugs. No, no. <laughs> except except the once when I was with I was with Hunter in uh, at the Rhode Island to mm. cover the the yacht race. You know. Oh yes. And uh, um, Hunter said, well, uh, what are you going to write on the side of the boat, Ralph? Mm. So I said, how about uh, fuck the Pope? And he said, are you religious, Ralph? (laughs) (laughs) As if if having said that, I'd be religious, you know. (laughs) So it was a funny, Mm. funny little things like that happen, you know, but we... He, we got in a boat and went round, rowed between the boats. Mm-hmm. And there was a guard. There. And I was just about to, 
You know these uh, spray cans? You, click, yeah. you do this and they click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. Hey, what, what are you doing now? What, what's happening? And, oh, we, we must flee, Ralph. We must flee. You know? <laughs> and he, he, he pulled on the rollocks, you know, pulled on the mm. oars, and they came out of the rollocks and his feet went up in the air like that. <laughs> there were little things like that that you don't forget. You know, yes, just, yes. Um, and uh, anyway, we got away eventually. Uh, that and, thing uh, about we must flee, I love the way he yeah. would mix kind of, ter you know, like s streams of obscenity with, with kind of very archaic language. Uh, very <laughs> archaic language, isn't it? <laughs> we must flee. <laughs> Absolutely. It's quite not, not scram, you know, not scram yeah. or, you know, no. <laughs> or get, the get the hell out of here or something. <laughs> right. We yeah. must flee, Ralph. We must flee. <laughs> so I think he and had a... Just, hmm? Sorry, no, carry on. No, I was just going to say he... He had a kind of old-fashioned newness, yeah. If you know what I mean, it's very. Uh, I mean, he he actually was in the air, the area, not the RAF, the uh, American Air Force, and I was in the British. You know, was doing the uh, yes the radar, mm. and uh, it was just a funny thing that we'd both been in the RAF. You know, in the the. The flying call. In the you know. flying, yes, yeah. 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 Um, just a little bit about some of the other things that you've done. You've done children's books. Um, you've done, yeah. obviously, lots of political illustrations and, and yeah. things of that kind. Um, I mean, would you say there's a part of your working life that you've really enjoyed more than any other, or is it all? does it all offer fascinating alternatives uh, to you? I think, um, well, m moving here in 19, when was it? 80. 1980. 1980. 1980. I can't say the word. 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, God, these these sort of things happen to you as you get older. No, that it's just uh, yeah, very strange. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's <just> weird, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. And now you have this a... wonderful book out, "A Life in Ink," which is, is, is was that is that something that you've actually put together yourself, or is it a compilation of well, all of your work? Sadie put it work. together. Well, yes. she put she'd been collecting stuff, stuff I'd forgotten about. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, at least we've got one thing about the the um, uh, the germ in the, you know the virus. Yes. yes, the one at the end is, is a virus. I think it's the last picture in the book. Right, right. And uh, Sadie, you collected them. You also well, with Steve Christ. Hmm? With Steve Christ. Steve Christ. Uh, Steve Christ. He put it together. Well, well yeah, we both did. Oh yeah, no. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Chris, the publisher, in um, uh, um, where the hell's he stationed? California. I know it's California. But I'm trying to think what part. It was, uh, oh god, I can't think of it. I'm yes, I'm lo I, it's, I'm losing, I'm losing consciousness. I can't think of anything. <laughs> uh, these, these things are very disturbing. They, they're quite disorientating, aren't they? Yes, I, know I, I don't like yeah, them at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I think maybe it's it's been wonderful to talk to you, and it's uh, it's it's been incredible to fill in all the background of these things. I think that book is actually an essential item for all the, for both your long term fans oh, and yes. for newcomers. So, oh, um, right. So Thank you very much. Very much looking yes. forward to seeing that. There's one of my favourite people, by the way has been W.C. Fields. Oh, my goodness, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. the one who... There's a... There's a... Uh, a head and shoulders of him over there. But um, he was the one that said... That when somebody said, nobody... No... No... Uh, no gentleman ever asked for his present back, you know. <laughs> yeah. He says, your idea of a measurement, your idea of a uh, gentleman, ma'am, 
is someone you can double cross, screw, tattoo, and make a horse's ass of. Well, to me, that's no gentleman. That's a horse's ass. You know, I, like, I always like his thing. There's a story. And, and he, he said he said he doesn't he doesn't uh, water never drink tr- never t- touch the stuff. I don't like what fish do in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's also one about uh, there's a booze one about Groucho Marx visiting his place. And, uh, and, and W.C. Fields took him upstairs and there was a huge stash of, of, of whiskey bottles and everything, all in crates and boxes and everything. <laughs> and, uh, and Groucho said, why are you doing this? He said, well, you know, it, it's because, because of prohibition and everything like that, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and Groucho said, but they've abolished prohibition now. You don't have to worry about it. And he said, might come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to love this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's... Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I really well, appreciate really good, it, John. Anyway, yeah, uh, and, and, um, and, and, uh, and very and good it, luck with, with the book and all. Oh, thank you, yeah. And what are you doing? Is this your room where you work? Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, it sort of is, yeah. Well, this is really our living room. There's a painting on behind my head, which I is by my that. wife's mother, uh, oh, a landscape. I, uh, and yeah. um, It yeah, looks like something one would do... For whiskey bottles, for wi- that kind uh, of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she, know, she, a, was, a yeah, she, she was, a, she was an appreciator of those kinds of things. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> right. It's nice that. Yeah. 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 So uh, lovely. Well, that's that's fantastic. So thanks so much. And um, is there any is there any one question you would like to? I can't think of anything else that we haven't touched on, and you know, unless anything else crosses your mind about uh, yes. about whether you actually went to that Esquire office or not, or maybe met Carlo Kramer, who was the guy who, who or Carlo Kramer, who oh, was, yes. the, was the, what, the co-founder of it. Does, does yes. that does, does, I'm does not sure. ring a bell? It's a familiar name, Carlo mm. Kramer, but yeah. whether I met him, I'm not sure. Yeah. I was meeting quite a lot of people then, but, you know, I also met a few people in... In America, that I hadn't met before, but was interested to meet, mm. and did meet them. Um, but where the hell did I? Oh, and I met William Burroughs. You know that was interesting. Oh, oh. Right, yeah, that was terrific. Yeah, and we did a we did a a shooting match together. You know, we put you? one of my print prints up on a board, and he had a little. Six shooter gun, you know, mm. in a holder, mm. and he uh, right. talked like this, you know. <laughs> and I uh, said, so, so uh, I think, um, uh, out of the two of us, I think you go first, uh, William. And okay, great. Now you've got three places on the. It's a. It was a portrait of Hunter. In the three, <laughs> pla- the three, three places on the body. One was the, his uh, sheriff's badge. <laughs> he had a sheriff's badge at this time. And the other was, was his Rolex watch. And the third was between the eyes, you see. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, okay, okay. And then he went like, like this towards it. And it was about this, this far from <laughs> them. And he went, duh, 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 six <laughs> shots without the thing, like that. And I looked at it, and it was all over the place, you know, really. <laughs> and I, I said, well, I think you missed uh, William. He says, well, he's dead, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's wonderful. Anyway, yeah, that was quite a nice shooting <laughs> game we did together. Yeah, um, yeah. It sounds like a risky business to be involved with him doing a thing like that. Well, he Could kept have gone it anywhere. up front. He kept <laughs> it up front, you know, but he was <laughs> bumping around, you know. Mm. Yeah. All right, that's well, lovely. Thank you so much. Right, John. Well, yeah. it was really nice to talk to you. Yeah, very good and, to talk with you. And, I, and uh, well, I, I hope we meet one day if the that? world if the world ever yes. becomes normal again. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Mm. It would be nice. There's a uh, Macbeth here, by the way. Ah. A... Oh, right, my God. Oh. That's amazing. That's the doorkeeper, you know. Yeah. Uh, Blimey. I if if he well doesn't go open, open the door, the play can't go on. That's, yep, yep. That was Excellent. why I did it. Yes. Excellent. <laughs>
Yeah. All right. Well, thank oh, you well. so much. I'm going to um, sign out now. Lovely to and, see you. And, uh, lovely, lovely to talk see you, Joe. Yeah. And say Ben to Ben. Well, well orchestrated. Absolutely, absolutely. And <laughs> thanks so much to Sadie too. Thank you, well, Sadie. Yes, I've just seen you. I just seen yeah, you appearing out it. the corner of the picture every <laughs> yeah. now and again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks okay, Ben. No, John. Yeah. Lovely. Take care then. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Pleasure. Cheers. Pleasure.